Okay, so I am Brian Cardell, and this is my blog where you learn about me. You recognize this as being on the web because it's in a web browser, and in that same web browser, you can do kind of anything that you would want to do on a computer now, which is amazing and awesome. But also, even those apps that you download and install as like first class apps on your mobile device and on your desktop, those are increasingly using web technology underneath the covers. And so are lots of embedded systems like your uh, smart refrigerator, your TV, video game consoles, uh, car and airplane infotainment systems, digital signage, point of sale systems. Um, basically, as long as there's a UI, you can pretty much bet that somebody is trying to build that with web technology for good reason. Um, and even if there isn't a UI, increasingly lots of things are built with the same underlying stuff. Even if you went and printed a book, uh, a lot of those books are printed using web standards. So what this is trying to say here really is just that the web platform is infrastructure. It's a commons that we've built uh, you know, our entire world on, <clears throat> it is, you know, for everyone. But um, if you are among the everyone who has ideas about how to make it better, uh, even important ones like maps, um, and you're trying to improve it, uh, the experience can feel not always good. Um, it can feel like you've been put on hold. And no matter how politely they might say your call is important to us, it, it sure doesn't feel that way. So um, I want to kind of give you a little pep talk, but also rein it in with some reality and say um, there are reasons that it is this way. And let's talk about uh, how we approach this realistically and how we ultimately get there. So the reason it is this way is pie. Uh, you can only split a pie into so many pieces. And uh, to illustrate, we are all choosing to spend some of our time pie to be here and discuss this. And we could be doing something else really valuable, like maybe playing with our kids or um, doing important research. Um, not everyone has the same pie budget to work with. Some people are here because it's a labor of love. Some people are paid and we're paid by companies that have different budgets. And um, some companies uh, invest an astounding amount uh, of pie. They have an astounding amount of pie to use. and um, those are the, the critical pieces of pie come from the vendors who make a web rendering engine. Uh, but it is important to realize that it is still finite and also that it's voluntary. Um, it's not cheap. Like there are thousands of gears into development of the code. That's not the standards part. That's just development of the code and the wants are only increasing as the commons gets more and more used. Um, there are more and more wants. And these are actually a different ask of every one of these vendors because they have different size pies and their architectures are different and they have different ideas about the web and they have different staff. So realistically, things have to be prioritized. They just have to. And lots flows out of this. And um, one of those is that it is really, really hard to estimate uh, the kind of things because you know what it takes to get somewhere. Uh, so lots and lots of stuff uh, early on gets stuck here. It doesn't get past go, uh, or maybe it hasn't yet, like maps. So like to hold this up, in about 30 years, we have standardized somewhere around 130 elements in HTML. And over half of those are what you would call spicy divs. That is, the, like, they have almost no implementation cost. Um, they're mostly just a standards exercise. Uh, and even if you get past that point, you then have to agree on the details and get it done. The getting it done part is entirely on those couple of companies. You have to get it done everywhere, interoperably, accessibly. And uh, the costs go up quickly with complexity. So in 30 years, we have created one non-form-based interactive standard UI control element that isn't like for controlling media or something. That's summary details, and it is probably the simplest UI widget that has ever existed. Uh, the last major browser added gain support for it last year uh, by way of attrition. When Microsoft Edge went away, now it is just officially 100% part of the infrastructure, interoperable, all that stuff. Uh, 
that's important because now it is finally real. And uh, the trouble is that most people don't know that we've reached that point. So that takes some time. And then at the end, uh, developers need to find a use case to actually use it and, and the inkling to use it. So they do. And then only at this point, way, way, way at the end, have we historically said, hey, how's that super expensive pie that took, you know, uh, a decade and a few million dollars to give you? And uh, that is like the answer is frequently it could be better, honestly. Um, so I mentioned this not just to say it's terrible, but this is the things that inspired a number of us to get together and write the extensible web manifesto a number of years ago. And what this document says, if you're not familiar with it, is basically just we can do better and here are some ideas about how. Um, so one of the challenges here is that we talk about paving cow paths, but actually the paths are not very clear because they're so far removed from what we're actually trying to do that we're not like literally paving a cow path. We're actually looking at lots of cow paths and creating a road that we hope meets all the needs of all those other things. Um, so a better way to do this is probably to just give developers mostly the same abilities that browsers have um, and let them bring the ideas and the pies. Um, they're the ones that have all the ideas, but they're also the ones that can test it, but they don't need to wait a decade to do that. And then we can find out like, is basically this exact proposal, do developers like it or not? And this is important because actually frequently the answer will be no. Uh, and it will take several tries to get it right. And we, we can't afford to have those tries take years and years and years. Uh, we need to iterate more quickly than that. Um, but also we want to be able to tap into the ingenuity and the adjacent possibles that come with this. Uh, like when we're discussing use cases and when we're discussing how things might be like, we're not tapped into all of this, uh, including even how it might be used in entirely different ways. Many, many, many things are successful only at things they weren't actually designed for, including the web actually. Um, so this document basically suggests that we should kind of get out of the way. We should take those very precious centralized resources and not spend them here, but instead spend them on enabling this kind of thing to happen more in the wild and uh, on science for how we know when things are getting successful. And then we like learn how to use that to write it down and standardize things and get things across those last miles because this is the stuff that standards bodies are really, really good at. So that's kind of like high level overview, but I think that there are important details, at least they are important to me, which is that part of the aim here is to lay a nice, bright, unambiguous path. So we, we want not the cow path problem of the past. Uh, and that should have proof that it solves problems, that developers like it, that it is good enough by these measures that we don't even understand yet. And it should create a system where the, the result, where the, the work is kind of estimable. And that also means like, how does this actually map well to the web platform? So a big part of the extensible web manifesto encourages that we break things down, that we reduce the amount of magic required for any of these elements and that we expose the parts in the platform and sort of aim for the middle coarse grained things. So, uh, we could take dialogue as an example. Dialogue is a high level element that has been being spec'd for a long time. Uh, it's gone through lots and lots of gauntlets and it is very, very magical. It is a really, really big ask. And at the end of this ask, when we finally deliver it after, I don't know, many years, uh, what we will have is a dialogue that we hope meets needs and that people use it and that it's adequate enough. But we, we honestly don't know. Um, alternatively, um, the dialogue, one of the things, the bits of magic in there is inertness. And it is this complex juggle of things that the web platform can already do, but just given kind of a coarse grain switch that says all of these things are controlled by this concept called inertness. So we can just do that and we can expose that to developers that is necessary for dialogue, but it is also necessary for lots of other UI components, which we're not even talking about standardizing yet. So like if we want those to evolve in the wild, they need the same capabilities, the same raw materials to explore them. 
And that kind of changes things because we can break down into this smaller chunk and say this is valuable for all kinds of things. Um, and, you know, as a smaller, more estimable chunk of things. And that reduces then the ask of what is necessary for dialogue. It changes whether it's worth the investment, like it changes the calculus of this. And um, it's also, I should mention that like that's how software projects work in general. So that shouldn't be surprising that that's a good idea. Um, but also it then lets these, you know, these other patterns explore and use inert so that if we go to write that down, there isn't magic. It's built of the same coarse grain, lower level things. So um, I think that this also breeds resilience and adaptability. It avoids us biting off too much. Um, and as the web begins to evolve and change, we can evolve and change with it. So, um, you know, this is all good theory, but like, what's this got to do with maps? Should the web have maps? Should there be like a map element? Yes. <laughs> um, the web should have lots of stuff. The trouble is we just need so much more pie. Um, the web has too many needs and not enough investment. Um, and uh, that is actually what my company does. Uh, we let other people bring pie. There is no reason why it has to be the way that it is. It just is because that's the way we've always done it. But uh, Egalia helps other people come and invest in the platform and remove some of those barriers. Now, that doesn't mean you can hire Egalia and we can make something a standard, but uh, when it comes to all of those hard prioritization problems, if you need somebody to prioritize, we can help. And we're not the only ones. Other people can help you too. Um, so I think this is important though, because all of these same things that I was just talking about apply. Like, um, will are these necessary features that we need? What do we speculate people will do with this? How do we map this to these like vaguely similar cow paths that exist today uh, of various products or whatever? Um, and what would be good enough? And the trouble is I 100% believe we do not know. Um, whatever existing products exist or whatever, um, like whatever things they are, the only way to know is to test it. And if we test it, developers will know when they see it. Um, and once we have the proof, then we have something. Um, but we don't necessarily have everything because it also has to fit the platform well. It has to be aware of the pie and it should break things down in these coarse grain steps. So I would encourage people to aim for the middle, to look for the inert-like qualities here, to improve the cost benefit and find unlikely allies potentially uh, of people who say we can share some of that pie and, and sort of lift all boats. Um, so one way to do this is to ask the question is like, what are the things that make it hard today? And are those things only hard for you? And maybe squint at it a little bit. Um, so these have similar coarse grain needs like video game maps or if you were like making a lord of the rings site you want to make a map of mordor i don't know if that technically fictional places fall into that category but they they want all the same kinds of features like generally um but even if you squint a little bit harder things that aren't even maps at all like product images for e-commerce or technical drawings like you they have many of the same coarse grain needs. So actually the web platform is full of coarse grain needs and lower level things that would be necessary steps along the way to paint things on the screen. That might be uh, like off-screen canvas or hardware accelerated SVG or uh, coarse grain higher level features that are like how to make pan and zoom really much easier or you know not require all this JavaScript and to be able to say, this is exactly how it works. It's pan and zoom. Um, so I don't know all of the things, but there are many things in here. And I, I look forward to exploring with you and hearing your ideas about how we break it down and how I can help. So that's it. Thank you.